people are essentially doing the wrong thing. It's like you wouldn't drive a car without having driving lessons. Mm. You wouldn't try to fly a plane just because you can apparently make five grand. You, you know, you know, you wouldn't attach your own harness and try to bungee jump. You won't. So I mean, for as long as people doing these kind of things, you know, someone decides they want to fly a helicopter without any training, without any idea what they're doing, and they crash. Does that mean flying a helicopter is dangerous? No. <laughs> Welcome to Trade Happy. Welcome back to another Traders Podcast episode. Sit back, grab a notepad and pen, and take some notes. If you're new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button for more podcasts just like this one. Traders, if you have any questions that you would like to ask our next guest, drop them in the comments below. I'm sure he'll be happy to answer them. Um, I'll reply to every single comment. So if you have any questions at all, if you have any guests that you would like to be on the podcast, drop them down below as well. Today's guest has a rich history of a side of trading that most retail traders don't get access to. Um, he's worked with brokerages, one of the top brokerages in the world, um, and he's now come over and he's learned trading from world-class traders, and he's now doing his own service mentoring signals we thought it'd be really good to get him on the podcast today and give you guys some of the advice that he's learned over the years of trading at a different level to most so if you do enjoy the podcast hit the like button hit the subscribe button please welcome Dwayne. so for anyone that doesn't know who you are can you just tell us a bit about yourself Yes, uh, my name is Dwayne, Dwayne. I go by Dwayne FX. Um, I've been trading uh, professionally now uh, for, I'd say, two to three years um, in regards to having verified trading results. Um, and I uh, represent a company called Ace Signal. So how did you actually get started in trading? Where did it all begin? Um, I initially started uh, working in the industry um, in sales, um, and I did that for approximately about six years, um, working at some of the leading brokerages. I uh, essentially went on from there and, and kind of pushed on, uh, you know, my my kind of passion for trading. Um, I was around it every single day. Um, I was speaking to traders like yourself. Um, and found it to be quite inspiring, um, not to mention the possibilities of, of winning uh, money. Mm. Um, so it's always been uh, something that's caught my attention, um, although I was in a position where I saw the majority of people losing money. Yeah. And did that like make you weary about getting into it? or Definitely did. I mean, it, you know, with the whole stigma around um, trading and, and the majority of people losing, um, it, it does kind of make it a little bit more of a challenge um, to even, or, or risk to even want to you know, dip your toes into, mm. so to speak. Um, but yeah, you know, when, when, like I say, you know, when you're in that industry and you're seeing it and you're talking to all these traders, you do get a chance to speak to those that are also winning. Um, and you get a judge, get you know you're in a position where you can actually essentially judge or make a judgment of uh, why people are winning or why people are losing, um, as well as kind of getting feedback on that. Um, and you know I came to know that the majority of people uh, that do lose, uh, most of, more often than not, it's a matter of them being uh, misinformed or uh, uninformed completely so just not knowing what they're doing rushing in uh staking wrong or picking the wrong asset class or wrong type of leverage or account uh, things along those mm. lines and working on that side of the industry was there anything that you that you noticed in the winning traders consistently um it's, it's always a, it's always a one of those questions kind of uh, open open-ended mm. questions because what defines a professional trader is quite subjective um i mean 
I would suggest, or from my experience, uh, someone that has a plan and essentially sticks to that plan um, and is consistent while using that plan would would definitely contribute a lot to what would contribute to a successful uh, trader or a professional trader by status. Um, so yeah, again, it's, it's, it's having a good idea of what you're actually investing in um, and the behavior of what you're investing in, because you know all, all asset classes are completely different. You know, trading the pound against the dollar and the yen against the dollar are completely mm-hmm. different different markets. Although they, you know, they both move in the same direction when the dollar gets stronger, um, their general behaviors are completely different. Yeah, and can you briefly describe your your strategy or your trading plan? Um, I, I'm very much a sentiment trader, um, just as that's my preferred approach in, in regards to refining my entries or uh, defining a, a good position to enter or, or take or a particular market to to to, to trade. I mean, I, I personally only trade the, the majors, the major FX mm-hmm. pairs, um, as as they are massively bound by limitations. Um, as in, you know, they they rarely trend, um, or, or they can generally only trend for so long uh, before coming back down, uh, which allows you know position management um, and staking um, and risk management uh, to be be a little more calculated, um, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, I, I trade the foreign exchange majors only. Um, I mean, for example, I'll give you an example if you were to look at uh, the Aussie dollar at the moment that's had a good run, um, a run upwards, it, it will always come back down at some stage. Um, so even if you're caught in the in the middle of the market, for example, in the, or in, you know, you've gone in the wrong direction, um, more time than not, you will also always get the opportunity to come back out of that trade if you haven't already stopped yourself yeah. out. And so do you think that like newer traders or not profitable traders that have seen what you've seen have their stops a little bit too tight? Um, you think they should give it more? I, uh, it, 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 like, I mean, it, I think it's wrong to kind of attach too many rules uh, to, to trading. And I think that's a common mistake that people mm. make. Um, if you are, for example, you know, if you were, if you were, you know, if, if you're trading dollar Swiss at the moment, that's near enough at the bottom end of, of its cycle, you know, lifetime cycle, and you wanted to buy dollar strength from there, you know, putting a tight stop loss would probably be a bad move. It'd be better off taking a, a smaller stake position uh, with the with the intention of perhaps waiting out or holding that position on in a longer term or you're trading the dollar swiss which is a slower moving market which does maybe 4 to 60 pips a day as opposed to selling the pound against the, the dollar or trading uh, you know cable or euro dollar which you'd find is you know you're still buying into dollar strength by selling uh, but you'd be you know if you look at a chart now you know that's that's mid range you know it's you know your your risk ratios to the upside or downside are, are, are massive mm. so you may want to tighter stop loss there you may want to come out in a, you know you may want to place a sell and say look if if it doesn't break downwards now I mean it can go up and up and up you know we can we can expand here uh, so you know it really does depend uh, and it's really good to get a profile. Um, really good to get a profile on each market um, before trading it um, so you can establish individual rules mm. uh, especially depending on the market conditions as well yeah. and you mentioned um, like a misconception that people think that they need to have you know strict rules or lots of rules to trade profitably um, what are some other misconceptions that some people have about successful traders um, it's uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, 
that 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 one would definitely be the main mm. one. That you know that there's p- particular rules which can you can apply to absolutely everything. Yeah. Um, I think people commonly are are are, are, are um, misled by how much you should trade with as well. Um, retail traders, especially you know most retail traders, you can trade with you know two grand, five grand, most definitely. Um, but you you better have the patience yeah. to trade the two grand or five grand. I think people have a misconception that trading's you know fun or you know exhilarating. Then it's, I find it to be absolutely the, the opposite. You know, you spend most of your time being analytical, uh, which you can find some joy in uh, placing trades, managing them trades when you're wrong because we're all going to be wrong at times. Um, and it's it's quite the opposite. It's quite a, a boring process, and I think you'll find most uh, investors or traders, and in, in most fields or trading any asset class, would probably agree. Unless you're at a huge fund trading billions in in commodities or something of that mm. sort. And at like the start of the conversation, you mentioned that you've been trading for a few years now, in terms of with a track record. Where did you actually learn to trade? Did you take a course or did you have like a mentor that you looked up to? I had a mentor. Um, I was, you know, as we all are self-taught initially, you know, teaching ourselves, you know, bad habits. I think what you find is when you first start trading, most traders would usually, uh, especially you start in a demo, etc. you know, people usually... You know, linger towards gold or the Dow Jones, something that trends. And you find that, you know, initially you, you get in, you make some good profits, whether it be a demo or not. And, you know, your decision making essentially will be uh, quite good uh, most of the time when you start. Um, and it, it tends to get worse because what happens is we, we teach ourselves bad habits um, along the way. And that's where the miss information comes you know mm. we, we go on baby pips we read you or look on youtube for example and sometimes we're receiving the right information in the wrong dosages or the wrong dosages of the wrong information you know um and that's where the issue becomes so i had a mentor that essentially took me on and i end out those mistakes um but a trader that was very very astute um himself he'd actually been taught himself by Merrill Lynch traders uh, ex-Deutsche Bank traders and worked in a fund a small fund a family fund and he took me on he was one of my uh close close friends wow. actually um and he actually uh put me on the straight path and um you know I I, I stand by the fact that no matter who kind of mentors you in this kind of when it's trading you know you can have the best mentor or you can have the best information but there is a psychological element and there is an element which essentially uh you need to kind of apply yourself you need your own initiative um to essentially put everything together because your mental can't always be there um your mental can't always be there to kind of hold your hand uh, and once you are you know trading independently the markets are unforgiving and they change all the time. You know, if you consider where we now, we're in, we're in uh, September. In the last 12 months, in the last year, we've had so much shifts in the market, especially if we're considering a foreign exchange market or even the share market. You know, we've got US-China mm-hmm. trade wars, we've got Brexit, we've got a slowing global economy, we've got zero interest rates. When these things change, you know, there's no rule book, regardless of what you've been taught. Yeah. Um, so, yeah initiative plays a, a big part and like obviously having the right mentor can help you massively do you think that anyone with the right mentor can be profitable consistently profitable um yeah i mean i'd, I'd, I'd say anyone trading the right strategy uh can be consistently profitable but i reiterate you know it's definitely down to that individual to maintain the discipline and be able to grow um, with the markets. Uh, you know, if they're lucky enough to be able to stay in contact with the mentor uh, throughout their process or their journey, then that's brilliant. Um, 
but yeah, it's very individual. It's um, it's very individual unless you are kind of top trading. Um, you know where where your mentor is overlooking you or shadowing you, like you say. Um, it, it, you do need that independence and that ability to use your own initiative and uh, use the rules that you've been taught to adapt. Yeah, and when you were learning, um, what did you find most difficult when learning to trade? If anything. Um, uh, that's a good question. I'd say, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, I, I, I'd say it's quite diff- different actually. You know, at, at the beginning, it was when I was first kind of being taught, because I'd been trading by myself and, and being a break even mm. trader, um, I found as time went on. So initially, things, you know, started to start, look, everything cleared up. You know, oh, you know, I can see where I was going wrong. You know, I fixed those habits and, and things started to look up and I became profitable. Um, but as I say, you know, over time, things get a lot more difficult, you know, especially as a psychology, psychological, uh, psychological element, um, starts to play its part. Um, and when you've been profitable for three or four months, it's very difficult to continue as you are without altering, you know, staking or, wanting more to trade with or wanting more at the markets. And that may be me personally. Um, I'm not too sure, but um, that's where, you know, the discipline comes. And yet again, it it becomes something you come to the reality that this is never going to be something driven by adrenaline. Mm. Um, It's a slow calculated game, especially a strategy that I'm using, um, which can easily take, you know, give you five to eight percent a month, um, but that's that's is basically as good as it gets. Mm. And what do you think is the most important personality trait for a trader? Um, the most important personality trait. <laughs> um, I'm not too sure. Uh, it's it's very it's. I I I wouldn't say there's any one particular personality trait. Okay. You know, because there's personally there's traits which I may have. For example, uh, let's use greed as an example because that's that's one that's yeah. a, that's one that's used very commonly. So greed is something obviously where. Yeah, again, a misconception or it can be misconstrued um, because a greedy trader essentially may want or it may be seen that someone that's greedy may want more out of the markets. So, you know, they may uh, risk more perhaps or over trade or over stake. But then I've come across greedy traders that, are just greedy and they just like money and they like winning a lot. So whereas others may take extra risks or hold on to positions longer or leave longer, wider stop losses or take more positions, someone's more greedy in the sense that they have agreed for money and having money and wanting the money there and they take pride in seeing a higher balance. So their greed stops them from making silly decisions. Their greed mm. enables them to take positions out of the market uh, more responsibly or, or more sensibly. So it, it really depends on how you're trading the markets, how you're, you know, how you're appropriating the personality trait that you may have. Um, there's some of the best fund managers that's ever lived that have taken ridiculous amounts of risk, um, you know, does that does that make him more, you know, dangerous of a trader, a more uh, less risk adverse trader, or are they able to use their gumption to kind of make key decisions, uh, which had brought them the results? Mm. I've never actually heard anyone t- 
turn greed when trading into a positive. Um, I think that's quite a good perspective on it, actually. So, what's the? Go on, I mean, are you gonna say something? Yeah, so just just to kind of uh, yet yeah, again, I just don't think there's any particular rule, mm. uh, and this is where people, I, I, in my experience, people go very wrong. Oh, um, you know, I'm, I've had traders come to me that I've said, well, um, you know, I, I get really nervous, and you know, you can you can definitely you know use that use that trait as as something as as a positive. You know, once you've generated enough confidence keep those nerves don't come out of that shell stay stay wary don't don't ever change your stake size don't ever sell uh you know a market mid-market wait two weeks for another opportunity you know these kind of things can end up being very yeah. useful yeah um so obviously there's so many people trading the market so many different types of people how should traders define success as a trader? Um, I'd, I'd say consistency. Um, any consistency you get out of the market is is, is rewarding. Um, you know, I, I tend not to focus on the amounts, you know, that they're trading or the amounts of gains or profits and more about the ratio of winning. Um, the more you win, the more profitable you are. It comes hand in hand. Um, so that would probably be my answer mm. to that. Um, what would you say is the worst piece of advice you've ever been given? Mm -hmm. Buy low, sell high. Really? <laughs> um, worst bit of advice... Uh, yeah, it's, it's difficult, you know. Yeah, again, because some things will work for others and some, some won't work for others, you know. I'd say, you know, those kind of things, I'd, I'd, I'd say pretty dangerous, you know. Buy low, sell high, you know. Things that are ambiguous, things that, you know, you can't really take an analytical approach on. You know, people say, oh, you know, go with the trend. Like, on what? On, on, on which market? On, on which time frame? For how long? Mm. You know, I I I see a massively dangerous thing to do. Um, you know, what what would then be the point of your analytics? What are you then analyzing if you're happy to take a trade late? If you're happy to miss an opportunity, or where would your ideal entry be? You know, just kind of getting in and following something without having assessed where the route where it may have been uh, is quite dangerous. Mm. And what would you say is the best piece of advice? Um, stake low. Stake low. Keep your stakes as low as possible. It's about winning. It's not about making money. Mm. Yeah. I, I advise all new traders never ever to trade anything higher than 0 0.01, regardless of what you have in your account. Get used to winning. Psychology, psychology is a huge thing here. Um, and that is, a, that is a good good piece of advice. Stay mm. close. And what do you see in winning traders that you don't see in losing traders? Patience, definitely patience. And how can someone develop um, that? Ah, that's that's a hard <laughs> <laughs> that's a hard question. I'm still working on my own patience here. Um, I guess it comes down to your perception of of what trading is. Yet again, you know, if you expect to get some kind of rush. From coming in, don't get me wrong. If you're a scalper, or you know, to mention your your approach here, but generally, um, if you're if you're using a controlled strategy, you're you're gonna have to have patience. One to wait for an opportunity, 
uh, to then to wait for an, the right time to enter for that opportunity. Uh, you usually have patients managing the position because that's usually most of the work. Um, and then the patients to obviously continually do that over and over again. Um, and it, it just comes down to your perception. If you have a somewhat of a calm approach or there's a calm in you and there's no kind of want or need for instant gratification or this, you know, a rush or any adrenaline here, then I guess the patients will come, come mm. with that. Um, so massively down to your perception of what you're doing. It's an investment, it's a tool. Um, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. Um, so, yeah. And for anyone that is profitable out there, um, but they're looking to make six or seven figures trading, what advice would you give them? Six or seven figures trading, as in annually? Yeah, yeah. not daily. Ah, get go and get yourself a good bank to start with, because <laughs> to make to make six figures. Um, for example, if you start with fifty grand, and you want to end up with six figures, you're looking at one hundred percent a year, which would probably make you one of the best traders yeah. in the world. Um, like I, like I say, you know, you've got to be realistic. Um, if you have six figures to start with, then you want to make another year again if you want to double that. Yeah, yeah some seriously, seriously good results. Um, you know, start with a million if you want to make six figures and make 10%. Start with 800 grand, you know. Um, it's a, I believe it's a, you know, it's a process of compounding. Not everyone's going to have a huge amount of money, but, you know, yeah, again, that's where the patience comes into it. Starting with fifty grand and make taking over two to five percent a month isn't a bad thing if you if you plan to do that for the next five or ten years. You'll get there. Yeah. True. So if you could give one piece of advice to a new trader, what would it be? Um find find the right the right mentor, find the right information, uh, find people with actionable kind of physical results um, or some sort of credibility. Um, and consider what type of trader you'll be. Um, not everybody's gonna be a foreign exchange trader. Not everyone's gonna be a, a you know, some people prefer to be a trend trader because They'd rather put a trade on that run, you know. Um, yeah, find the right information. Um, try to avoid taking in too much information um, from different sources because you'll just become misinformed um, and essentially develop habits, bad habits. Mm. Um, the worst thing to do is trade while you're confused. Yeah. And what would you say makes you a profitable trader? Um, um, I don't know. I mean, like I say, the strategy I use is um, very good. Um, it's done me well. Um, it's a matter of kind of knowing knowing what a win is and knowing when you truly lost it. Mm. And so let's say you didn't have that strategy, do you reckon you would still be profitable today? No. Okay. And I, unless someone else gave me a winning strategy. Mm. So anyone that lo is looking to develop their own strategy, do you have any tips? Um, well, yeah, I mean, just, just always consider the longer term, I'd say, um, if you're going to develop a strategy, which I'd say is 
something that's extremely difficult to do. Um, or even if you're going to adapt the strategy to suit yourself, uh, take take a longer look, take a long term view on whatever you're trading. If you're going to trade the pound, if you're going to trade the dollar, if you're going to trade uh, the Nasdaq, have a look at it. You know, it's it's a lot more than just a TA, a technical you know technical approach or fundamental approach or you know these markets as i say they have ind- independent or individual uh, behaviors um they're affected by multiple different things um the, the better understanding you have of the asset uh, the more comfortable you'll feel when refining your position entries and exiting and trading it when uh, you know, when managing a position around a fundamental move, um, you know, people dive into technical analysis, but it's what are you analyzing? Um, that's, that's often the question I ask people. Mm. And what is some um, non conventional advice that you'd give to a trader that wants to succeed? Um, Maybe non conventional. Maybe I don't. I don't I'm not too sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, one of the one of the good bits of advice, which maybe is a bit more conventional, though, is. You know, don't chase, don't chase your losses. Uh, don't kind of revenge trade. Mm. Yeah, that's it's never. This is just never going to work. It's never going to. You know, as someone gave me a great example actually. Um, Swiss chap, he's a professional trader, and when he was explaining, he actually gave an analogy, and it's if you kind of stood on top of a building with. 50 people, 60 people, 100 people. Um, and everyone took a 20 pound note and threw that in the air, or wrote their initials on it and threw it off the building. The chance of you going back downstairs or going to the ground and finding that note that you lost or, or, or threw off that building is, is, is the chance is so, is just so low, you know, but the chance of you finding someone else's 20 pound is much higher. So essentially, if you are trading in a market, a liquid market, everyone's trading in that market. If you've made the loss and you've lost some money, don't try to chase back what you lost. Find a new opportunity. Mm. Find a new uh, find a new opportunity for, to make some more money elsewhere. Move on. That's good. That's good. Um, that's a good analogy, actually. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to say? And also, where can people find you? Um, people find me at the, uh, well, me and the team, um, www.acesignals.com. Um, we are available around the clock. Um, what to say to people? Yeah, I think just generally is, uh, you know, just clear up some stigmatisms around trading. You know, you know, people are quite afraid and don't really want to get involved and, um, but I, I just feel like a, a lot of the, you know, people that do lose and uh, where all of these kind of uh, stereotypes maybe have come from are people essentially doing the wrong thing. It's like you wouldn't drive a car without having driving lessons. Mm. You wouldn't try to fly a plane just because you can apparently make five grand. You, you, know, you know, you wouldn't attach your own harness and try to bungee jump you won't so i mean for as long as people doing these kind of things you know someone decides they want to fly a helicopter without any training without any idea what they're doing and they crash does that mean flying a helicopter is dangerous no i wouldn't say so yeah that's good actually yeah so thanks for getting on the podcast today